Good morning. We're so glad you're here this morning. Um, we have sunshine, even though it's going to get hot. We have sunshine, <laughs> so that helps. Um, happy Fourth of July. Hope you had a relaxing day or a fun day, whichever you wanted yesterday. So we, you know, we just want to remember those who are fighting, who fought for our lives, and I just we really appreciate that. So we can have freedom to come here to praise the Lord. So if you'll stand and join me, um, we will sing um, Trading My Sorrows. It's going to sound a little different because there will be voices. It's not just going to be mine. I said, wait a minute. I'm the only one. Let's have some other voices. So it's a recording, but we'll have some fun with it. Sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. But not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. I am blessed beyond the curse, for his promise will endure. His joy's gonna be my strength. Though the sorrow may last for the night, his joy comes with the morning. I'm trading my soul. For the joy of the Lord I'm trading my sickness I'm trading my pain I'm laying them down For the joy of the Lord And we say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes Sorry, I'm having a little hard trouble hearing monitors. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm I'm having trouble hearing the sound, hearing the singing and the music. Um, We're going to do every praise. Hezekiah Walker um, wrote this song and said, Not unto us, but every praise is to our God. Every word of worship. You can't come, you can't make it much simpler than that. We owe God everything. So let's sing like we do owe God everything because it's true. Graph. Every praise 
praises to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. God, my Savior, God, my healer, God, my deliverer, yes, He is, yes, He is. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Chain Breaker was written by Zach Williams. He grew up with loving, nurturing parents and a strong, supportive grounding in the church. Seduced away by the illusion of rock stardom, he got into drugs and alcohol excesses. He realized God is what he needed, which each of us can know. God is a chain breaker. Somebody testify if you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it. 
somebody testify? Somebody testify. Hey, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you've got shame, he's a chain breaker. You need freedom or saving. He's a prison shaking savior. If you've got chains, he's a chain breaker. In John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So we're going to sing, He Touched Me. Thank you. You may be seated. We will go ahead and go into prayer time. Um, we have some praise gods. Um, Lois Seeger's great step-granddaughter, Paige Rainey, is home. So, yay, the prayers worked. Um, also, P.J. Bennett, um, the tumor in his pelvis is getting smaller. They found uh, certain proteins that are very rare with Ewing's, but the doctor said they have an oral chemo that is very promising for that type of expression. So.
please pray that that will, you know, he'll be able to get that and it'll be able to keep working and making it smaller to get rid of it. So that is such a praise. So prayers are truly helping. Um, we have some new requests. Um, Lori Rohr uh, has a kidney stone she's trying to pass. Um, also, we want to be praying for Dave Martin as a vehicle went into his house and caught on fire. So this is a, happened a month ago, and they got it all fixed. So now this is a different one. So just be praying for him. Um, right now, he's in a, under a lot of... Um, Dress, thank you. I'm like, <laughs> it is a lot of stress. Um, also, I did want to let you know that Norman's dad passed away Monday. So just kind of keep that family, especially in your prayers, um, uh, that that has happened. Also, we want to be praying for Esther Williamson's daughter. She is 21 years old and is uh she's very self-destructive but she doesn't want to hear from anyone uh anything about it so just be praying uh that that is something that can be taken care of and we'll just pray that she hears it from god and that way you know and listens so um and there, I did notice here in Sunbury, there were a couple other churches that are opening. So just pray that they are kept safe um, and that the word of God is preached there. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you so much for those who have come out. And we thank you so much for those who are watching on Facebook Live. We love you. And we just want to thank you for all that you have done for us. We know that you are here worshiping with us, and we just want to praise your name. You are a loving God who we know we can turn to any time. We want to praise you for those who have been healed um, and who are in the process of healing and finding um, new uh, drugs and things that can help them get better. Um, we also want to pray... Uh, for those who are ill and are uh, trying to work through things um, in their body, we ask that you just give the doctors the knowledge and the wisdom of what's best for each person. Be with Dave Martin, especially today, as um, there was a, car, a vehicle, car vehicle, a fire at his house last night. We just ask you will be with him because this, he is very down right now. Um, we want you to just lift him up. And, Lord, we ask that you be with uh, Norman's family as he is, um, Norman's dad passed away. And we just um, want to pray for that. We also want to pray for Kendall, who is Esther's daughter, that she will open her heart and mind to Christ, that you can speak to her um, so that she realizes what is going on. And we just ask that, Others around her can be loving so that she will um, see that what she's doing is self-destructive. Um, we ask that you be with those who are not here today, um, that they will be safe on their travels. Um, if they're sick, they will be made well, and we will see them back here again. We ask that you be with Pastor Dan as he preaches, that the Holy Spirit will speak through him, um, that we... And our hearts and minds will be open to what you're trying to teach us this morning so we can take it out and share it with others. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Well, good morning. You know, I'm glad there's not ornery people like me in this church. You guys, for the most part, behave pretty well. I was very ornery in church. I, I, we were, yesterday, we, I had a family reunion and we were all in a big circle talking about stuff that happened when we were kids and uh, one of the comments came up was how often this preacher got whipped after church on Sunday mornings and I'm telling you if I would look up and Leslie was not here and I knew that that recorded piano music was playing as soon as the song finished I would raise my hand and yell one more time <laughs> just to watch the band what do we do? 
Anyway, I hope you all had a wonderful 4th of July. I did. I went to my family reunion, and uh, it was pretty much typical. There was not young people there. Young people uh, all said we're not coming because of the COVID. So we're usually, there's 50, 60 people. There were 20 people, and we had a wonderful time, enjoyed each other, told a lot of stories that, I don't know, we might not have told them stories in front of the kids, you know, but uh, we, we did have a wonderful time. I came home last night, and uh, Sammy was pretty close to getting off of work, and I pulled into Burger King down there by 71, and uh, I got our food and turned to come home, and all of a sudden, sheriff's deputies started flying by me, and the uh, highway patrolmen started flying by me, and emergency vehicles from like Delaware come flying by me, and I'm like, what in the world is going on? So I couldn't go home that way, and I had to go way around to go away. Well, then all of a sudden, I started hearing all these kids lighting off firecrackers, and I thought it was gunshots. And I started calling all my kids. I was nervous because I'd seen all the flags and stuff in the square the night before. And I thought, have they come to burn down Sunbury because of the patriotism? And I know that sounds silly, but it's not a far-fetched thought, is it? I stay pretty light. I'm, I'm a listener. I listen a lot, but I had a, a, t- a 23-year-old come this week and said that she wasn't even talking about the 4th of July. It wasn't a holiday because, you know, she's so mad at America and all this stuff. And I finally lost it. I didn't get mean. I didn't yell. I said, where do you want to live? And she said, what? And I said, you tell me where you want to live. Because I said, everywhere has a lot of problems. And when you put all the problems up against each other, I'm pretty blessed to live in the United States. It is an imperfect country ran by, and this is our fault, extremely imperfect people. Okay, because think about all the times that you voted for somebody that you just marked a square that you really didn't know the person. Oh, yeah? Okay. Uh, I will never, ever, I've not been doing that for about 12 years now. I don't vote for every office because I refuse to vote for somebody that I haven't studied about. But I'm sure glad I live in America. And it's got a lot of problems, and I pray for it, and, and, uh, but I'm glad to be here. And I still get chills when I think about everything that's happened so that we can live in this country. And hopefully we can get it all fixed, and we'll talk a little bit later about, you know, it's the church's responsibility to get a lot of it fixed. And it doesn't mean the way I want it. It's what if we all work on it the way Jesus wants it? Oh, yeah? Which means if we want to do it the way Jesus wants it, we're going to do a lot of listening. Because we'll find out that there's a lot of stuff going on out there that most of us safe in our homes. We don't realize what it's like. Amen? So, anyway, that's my little... 4th of July speech, but I hope everybody had a wonderful time. It was so good to see family and and be out, and I had a really good time, and I hope you did too, and I know it was tough, but I did drive by a lot of houses coming, Bart, I drove with Bart and Vicky, so he went with all these back roads to get to these places, and and we, I can't tell you how many farmhouses we passed by that there were 40 cars there. So I think family reunions were a big thing yesterday. I think a lot of families get together. And if you had any question, how many of you heard by Friday there was no strawberries or corn on the cob in in Columbus? No corn on the cob for the 4th of July. But anyway, well, hi, Facebook people. We're glad to have you today. Uh, I should let you guys know it's communion day, so... Go get a cinnamon roll and a glass of milk or something and be ready to take communion with us at home. And uh, all of you, hopefully, did everybody here get one of these little communion kits? If not, they're out on the fellowship table or the, out in the fellowship hall on the communion table and you can grab one. But we're back to uh, going into John 9 
And today's sermon is a very one of my favorite scriptures in the entire Bible. But it's how can the blind see? And, and what I wanted to ask you today is, have you ever researched anything? Really researched something? I'm not talking about for a school project or something. Have you ever researched something for yourself personally? Personally. I know uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, somebody got on Facebook and put all these films of all these statues of Jesus that had been destroyed in Buffalo and said, can you believe this? They've went from Christopher Columbus to Jesus. And I'm not kidding you. I was, all of a sudden, I found myself as a wild man. So I said, stop. It's Facebook. Let us research. And I researched, and these were pictures of a place that was vandalized in 2018. It had nothing to do with the current situation, had nothing to do with what was going on. And this person who I know probably isn't an evil person who put this on. They copied what they seen from somebody else without checking into it. But I was so blessed that I went on the internet and, and, and read and checked and looked and seen that all the footage from that thing, those pictures, was 2018. There's been no statues of Jesus destroyed because of this stuff. It hasn't happened. But boy, if you hear about it, aren't you ready to get your rifle and go out there? Yeah. You know? And, and so what, what it's like is, is sometimes we have to research things for ourselves. And when we do, what do we find? Because it can help you in life to have the ability to go and check and look things out. It's just like right now, I, I'm getting so many questions about the return of Jesus. And I'm getting a lot of questions for people who have been Christians for like 40 years. And I've, I say things like this. This is the kind of stuff that gets me in trouble and people call me a smart aleck. Well, what did you understand when you read Revelation? I don't get an answer. Or I get, he's such a jerk, you know what I mean? Those kind of things. When you prayed and asked God to reveal to you what you were supposed to learn from that, what did you understand? When you read a couple books about Revelation to help you go and understand the Scripture, what did you learn from it? And because that's, that's part of what we do. Why didn't you come to Dave's Sunday school class? No, 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 no. Well, I would have known everything about Revelation. And then that stupid COVID came. Right, Dave? Yeah. And, and you know, but, but the thing is, is if we research so much, we learn so much more. If we study God's Word, there's so many more things we learn. Like, I, I want to share a couple of things. You know, if, if, if you're in the temple, if you're a, a Sadducee or Pharisee, you're a rabbi, every day you study the Word of God. And I have to tell you, you can't believe how well the rabbis of that time knew the book Isaiah. Because you know how much we love John, you know? Or maybe your favorite's Matthew. They loved Isaiah. It was so full of promise. It was so full of hope. They just loved Isaiah. And I want to I share a couple of scriptures with you. Isaiah 29, 17 through 18. Soon the forest of Lebanon will become a field with crops thick as a forest. The deaf will be able to hear whatever is read to them. The blind will be freed from a life of darkness. The poor and the needy will celebrate and shout because of the Lord, the holy God of Israel. God is giving a promise that soon the blind will be healed. Did you hear that? You read that and you understood that? And if you're, if you're uh, a Sadducee or Pharisee and it's time before Jesus is born or in his lifetime, you're discussing that at your evening meal. You're sitting around with your family or a bunch of other people and you're talking about this because that's what it was like with the Bible in those days. It was the entertainment. Nobody said, oh, we want to skip Bible study because it's American Idol night. That didn't happen. Everybody studied God's Word every day. It's what they talked about. It's how you learn to read. It's how you, you went to what you t were taught in school. The Bible. 
and Isaiah 35, 3 through 5. Here is a message for all who are weak, trembling, and worried. Cheer up. Don't be afraid. Your God is coming to punish your enemies. God will take revenge on them and rescue you. The blind will see and the ears of the deaf will be healed. Isn't that awesome? The blind will see. So see, what you're saying is you've got a whole group of people who run the temple, who have studied their entire lives, that you will know when God is here because the blind will see. That is how you will know when God is here. Nobody else is ever going to heal the blind. Now I want you to understand something. You're at a time from Adam and Eve to the time of Jesus Christ. And guess how many blind people have been healed in that time period? Anybody got the big zero? The big nothing? The big not? But God has told them through one of their greatest prophets, a prophet that was lifted up to where they just knew that everything he said was gold. Everything that he said was perfect. And he has told them that when God comes, the blind will be healed. You got that in your research? You got that in your notes? Because you're sitting there waiting for a time that the blind are healed to know that God is here. And the Messiah will heal the blind. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we come to you today knowing, Lord Jesus, that you healed the blind. Knowing that you are the Messiah. Knowing that you are the Son of God. And we praise you for that. And we ask that we can help other people learn this and that this can become something in our life. We, we researched, you will do this, it happened. You're going to come again. We researched, we see everything happening, you are going to come again. And we're so thankful for that. We're so excited for that. And Lord, I ask that you will help us to learn this today and that your message will touch our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The blind can see. And uh, there, there should be no surprise here. You know, everybody that was a Sadducee and Pharisee should be waiting for it. You should be looking for it with hope. You know, when am I going to go down to where all these blind people are hanging out and all of a sudden one of them gets healed? Boy, I hope that happens. I hope that happens. You know, we're told in Revelations to pray, Jesus come soon. How many Christians are praying, Jesus come soon? How many people want that to happen? How many people are ready to be with him and someday it will happen we study God's word every day and, and, and things that happen are called signs they are all signs to make us aware that God's word is true and that we better be ready because it's going to continue to progress until we are with him John 9 1-12 starts us off in a, one of my very favorite stories in the Bible I just love the story of this man and his family. And um, it's a long chapter, so I'm going to do a lot of reading today. Please forgive me. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man who had been blind since birth. Jesus' disciples asked, Teacher, why was this man born blind? Was it because his parents sinned? No, it wasn't, Jesus answered. But because of his blindness, you will see God work a miracle for him. As long as it is day, we must do what the one who sent me wants me to do. When night comes, no one can work. While I am in the world, I am a light, the light for the world. After Jesus said this, he spit on the ground, made up some mud, and smeared it on the man's eyes. Then he said, go and wash off the mud in the Siloam pool. The man went and washed in Siloam, which means one who is sent. When he had washed off the mud, he could see. The man's neighbors and the people who had seen him begging wondered if he could really be the same man. Some of them said that he was the same beggar, while others said that he only looked like him, but he told them, I am that man. Then how can you see, they asked. He answered, someone named Jesus made some mud, smeared it on my eyes. He told me to go wash it off in the Siloam pool. When, he, when I did, I could see. Where is he now, they asked. I don't know, he answered. You know, the first question comes up. Are people deformed because of the sins of their parents or sins that they did? And, and we love to say that, don't we? That family's always been that way because of sin. If you'd have known their grandparents, center, 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 center. And all these bad things have always happened to them because of their grandparents. You ever heard that before? I've heard that before. It's a lie. 
It is a lie. We are held accountable of sinners uh, for sin. We are held accountable for our own sins. Okay? Not the sins of our parents. You say, well, how come a little baby can sometimes be born without an arm or anything? That's because it's an imperfect world. It's not because of their sin. It's not because of their parents' sin. It's because we're in a world full of sin. And so, uh, no, people are not deformed. So Jesus comes, and, and a couple things happen here. The first is, is that when he heals this man, he spits on dirt and puts it on his eyes. And people said, why did that happen? Well, we've studied and we found that it's the chemicals that were in Jesus' saliva. No, we didn't. The reason that I believe Jesus did this was two things. One is that Jesus was telling them how important the Sabbath was unless you were doing something to really help somebody. And that God would help you on the Sabbath. And so I really think that he did that because, I'm going to tell you, it was a violation of the Sabbath to these people to do that with the dirt. But it wasn't a violation of the Sabbath to help somebody. Does that make sense? It's two different things. He was helping somebody. So I personally think that Jesus did the dirt just to aggravate them and teach them at the same time. But the second reason that Jesus did the dirt was he put it on his eyes, and he looked at him and he said... Go to this pool and wash it off, and you'll be able to see. Now, how many people would have just said, crazy, dude, and wiped the dirt off their eyes? You think there's a lot of people that would do that? Right? I mean, we live in a world today where you tell people, follow Jesus, and it'll change the world, and you'll never die. And people say, I don't get into that crazy hocus pocus. I don't believe that stuff. I don't think any of that's true. You think there's people who do that? The people that do it are the people that have faith. The man went down because he was so desperate for his eyes to be healed, it took faith to go wash that off. And God wanted to see that faith. Jesus wanted to see that faith in the man. Jesus wanted to see, wants to see that faith in us. He wants us showing our faith that we will follow him, that we believe him. We believe what he has to say. And when we know that, people say, well, who is it? And it's the question we said. Who is Jesus? Well, he's the Messiah. How can you say that Jesus is the Messiah? How can you go out on a limb and say that blasphemy? Whoa, 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 whoa. Let me get out my tablet. Let me show you Isaiah. You want to explain this to me? It says that when God comes, the blind will see. This man was blind from birth. He just admitted, I am that man. People are recognizing him as that man. This Jesus goes up, puts mud on his eyes. He goes and gets in the pool, and he can see. Therefore, the equation is, is he is the one from Isaiah. He is God who has come to change the world. Oh, yeah? How did they not believe that? And I'll tell you, as we go into this, they didn't want to believe it. It has no part of that they didn't believe it. You look at events that are going on in the world right now, and there's something that will happen on the news that even though they can show you the films of it, they can read you all the research reports from it and everything, and you will just say, I can't believe that. You know? I had a cousin tell me yesterday about he just doesn't believe all this COVID stuff. And I said, I'm really sorry to tell you, but if you worked in the hospital, you'd sure feel different because they're already coming in. One of my friends who had COVID from taking care of people got the call yesterday or Friday at 2 o'clock that at 3 o'clock he had to report to the new COVID unit to take care of people. And he looked at me and he said, here we go again. You know? And the thing is, is we can sit at home and we can deny, 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 deny all we want. Come work at a hospital. You know? Your denial will shrink really fast. Oh, yeah, Esther? 
you see everything that's happening, it goes away pretty fast. So sometimes we just don't like the truth. We're just like the Sadducees and Pharisees. Here it is. They know that it's Jesus. But they don't like that. They don't like that. So soon the federal investigation starts because there has to be a federal investigation, right? And we're about to see it big time because the authorities are going to have to check everything out. One of the things that I pray for every day and I hope you pray for every day, how many of you are praying for a vaccine? You know, I'm praying for a vaccine like you can't believe. I want to just go out and do everything and not worry about this stupid stuff anymore. And not think about it. Not wear a mask anywhere. And, you know, not have to worry about it. Did I forget to wash my hands for a second? You know, because anytime you're near anybody washing your hands, I tell you, yesterday I was showing the family my hands, and they're, they're a lot better today after 40 minutes in a really good hot tub and a lot of lotion. Uh, <laughs> my, my brother-in-law has a state-of-the-line hot tub, and I was showing Kyle. It's beautiful, isn't it, Kyle? And I, I spent 40 minutes in that hot tub yesterday after two hours in a pool. You think I slept good last night? And uh, so, but anyway, my hands are nothing but dead skin. You know the zombies on Night of the Living Dead? That's what my hands look like. Because after a day at the hospital, I probably sanitize my hands and wash my hands with soap and water somewhere up around 80 to 90 times. I'm looking at Esther. Yeah. And, 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 it's, and, and I'm just dead skin, you know? And, and it's, I'm tired of it. I want it to stop. But we do have the Food and Drug Administration. And they say that they think the Food and Drug, food and drug Administration will probably take about a year to approve a vaccine. Okay? So if they take a year to approve a vaccine, we're going to be that long on it. And, you know, the thing is, I'm ready to jump in on a vaccine. I'm ready. They can send me a kid at home, and I'll jump in. I'll be a test subject. I don't care. And, and I had a, a cousin tell me yesterday, she's totally different mindset than me. She's going to want that sucker tested for two to three years before she takes it to see what it might do. Because you know what I mean? It's going to be a test drug. And after giving it to several lab rats, they found him playing chess. You know? And you just... You don't know what they're going to find when they do this stuff. So, and you hear all the argument about the COVID-19 drugs, don't you? This drug will work, this drug doesn't work. But the Sadducees and Pharisees, they were going to check into things. And uh, uh, starting um, in verse 13 through 17, the day when Jesus made the mud and healed the man was a Sabbath. So the people took the man to the Pharisees, and they asked him how he was able to see, and he answered, Jesus made some mud and speared it on my eyes. Then after I washed it off, I could see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man Jesus doesn't come from God. If he did, he would not break the law of the Sabbath. Others asked, How could someone who is a sinner work such a miracle? Since the Pharisees could not agree among themselves, they asked the man, What do you say about this one who healed your eyes? He is a prophet, the man told them. Who is this man? So their first thing they do is they go to the Sabbath, which Jesus had already explained to them. God had already told them. How many of you are glad that God doesn't take the Sabbath if he needs to help us? Do you pray on Saturday? Yeah. Because you know what? God doesn't want us to work. He wants us to take a day of rest. But he wants us to help people. He doesn't want us to ever stop helping people. There's a difference between the certain kind of menial labors that we can refuse to take a rest from and helping people and being there for people. I would like you to imagine what it would be like to call my house on a Sunday and say, Dan, they've just rushed so-and-so to the hospital. Will you please come and pray with us? Nope. Sabbath. Sorry. Hope he lives till tomorrow. I'll be there then. What would you think? How would you feel? You'd say, I want a new preacher. And most people would say, I want a new God. Oh, yeah? God takes care of us every day. He wants us to rest. But you know what? They they couldn't understand that because they liked that legalism. They kind of liked stoning people. 
because it made them feel better than other people. And the church can do that, can't we? Aren't there people we like to feel better than? And they've asked the question, who is this man? They accuse him of being a sinner. Well, he's hardly a sinner because how can a sinner heal the blind? Because the Bible tells us the first time we're going to see the blind healed, God's going to do it. And they knew those scriptures. So he's hardly a sinner. Goes on in verse 18, says, But the Jewish leaders would not believe that the man had once been blind. They sent for his parents and asked them, Is this the son that you said was born blind? How can he see now? The man's parents answered, We are certain that he is our son, and we know that he was blind. But we don't know how he got his sight or who gave it to him. Ask him. He is old enough to speak for himself. The man's parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. The leaders who had already agreed that no one was going to have anything to do with anyone who said that Jesus was the Messiah. So they go to the parents. And here's something tough we see in the parents. The parents refused to speak because of where they were in society. Because of what their social status was. Have you ever approved of something because of your social status? That if you were considered wrong, that you would have, you know, offended your friends, and they might not want you hanging out with them anymore? Yeah, have you ever been ostracized from a group of people because you're just too religious? When I lived in Portsmouth, I had a lot of Portsmouth memories yesterday. I loved these guys that coached baseball with me. We all coached baseball. We coached all the traveling all-star teams together and everything. And I was pretty much the hitting instructor because I was always a good hitter. And I can still teach people to hit. I can teach kids to hit. And I was the hitting instructor. And they just loved me. And they hanged out, hung out with us and they invited us to their social dinners and their picnics and everything. And as soon as baseball season ended, we didn't hear from them again. And, and so I got one of them and, and just found out, well, you know, we like to go a little heavy on the beer at our gatherings, and you're the, you're the minister at Central Baptist. We, we, we really don't want you to be here. Yeah? I didn't even say nothing. I never said nothing about beer. I never chewed anybody out for drinking beer. I just got socially banned because of my relationship with Christ. They didn't know what my opinion was on beer. For all they knew, I could out drink them all. <laughs> I'm the only Baptist preacher in America that will say that today. But they didn't want me there because of that. And you know what? There are things that we will make stands that people won't like us. And these people chickened out. They were so nervous of the Sadducees and Pharisees. Can you imagine? You think about the love for your child. I can't imagine that one of my four kids was born blind. And all of a sudden, one day, Jesus walks in and gives them sight. I would be so all over Jesus that you could take me out and kill me for what he had just done. You know, Jesus gave my parents eternal life, my grandparents eternal life, on my kids' eternal life, on my friends' eternal life, more people' eternal life. How can I back down from telling everybody about him and testifying him? And you don't want me in your social circle? That's fine. Kick me out of your social circle. I'm in the king's court. Oh, yeah? I don't have to worry about that, but they did, and it still happens today. People back down from telling how they truly feel about things and we don't back down from telling how we feel with Jesus goes on in 24 the leaders called the man back and said swear by God to tell the truth we know that Jesus is a sinner look at everything they're putting this man through who can you imagine in this how you want to spend your day in court because you can see now and I got instead of flowers and trees and all the beautiful hills of Jerusalem I got to look at these idiots the leaders called the man back and said, Swear to, by God to tell the truth. We know that Jesus is a sinner. The man replied, I don't know if he's a sinner or not. All I know is that I used to be blind, but now I can see. 
What did he do to you? The Jewish leaders asked. How did he heal your eyes? The man answered, I have already told you once, and you refused to listen. Why do you want me to tell you again? Do you also want to become his disciples? One of my three or four favorite lines in the entire Bible. Some translations say, do you want to follow him too? Don't you love that? Don't you love that? The leaders insulted the man and said, you are his follower. We are followers of Moses. We are sure that God spoke to Moses, but we don't even know where Jesus comes from. How strange, the man replied. He healed my eyes, and yet you don't know where he comes from. We know that God listens only to people who love and obey him. God doesn't listen to sinners. And this is the first time in history that anyone has ever given sight to someone born blind. Jesus could not do anything unless he came from God. The leaders told the man, you have been a sinner since the day you were born. Do you think you can teach us anything? Then they said, you can never come back into any of our meeting places. That's okay, I'm going to find a new church. You people are nuts. This man healed me from blindness. It's totally in line with the scriptures, and you're going to tell me I can't come back? Do you want to follow him is just one of the greatest lines because you would think, wouldn't you think if you were healed from the blind that they want all this information because they want to know everything so they can declare him king? I mean, because this is your religious leaders. Wouldn't you believe that? But no. How strange that you don't know the word. You know, it's kind of scary. It's kind of scary and you talk to people in today's society, you talk to people... There's churches out there that are adding a whole bunch of stuff to God's Word. You know that? I've learned so much new stuff in the last 10 years about the Bible that's not in the Bible. One of the things I'll never get forget is, did you know that the devil was the worship leader in heaven before God kicked him out? And that's why we don't do worship music. And I have taken this book up to so many people who teach that and say, can you show that to me? No, I can't because the Holy Spirit has to reveal it to you. Oh, were you a Sadducee or a Pharisee? Did you come inventive with God? Did you start doing new stuff that's not there? You can see people have done that with God's word forever. How strange that people don't know the real word of God. The word of God is written for common people. Did you know that? It's not written so that only the most intelligent people can understand it. It is written for the common man. And when we can read it, it's very easy to understand. It's not that hard, especially when we get translations. You know, God blessed us to be able to take, take the tough Hebrew and Greek and translate it. You know, for years, I've struggled with the fact that people will say, well, I will only read the King James Version. Well, you know what? You are so much more intelligent than me because I can't understand half of that. I do better with some of the Greek than I do the King James. Oh, yeah? I don't get that. But you're so offended by anything else, even though you're not really understanding it. God's Word is there for people to understand. And we can study God's Word, learn God's Word, and have a relationship with God's Word. If you read the King James Version and you're like, I get all that. That's awesome. But you can't put down somebody else for trying to enjoy the relationship they have by learning God. Because it's there. It's easy to understand. And we learn the truth. Because the truth changes the world. And when the truth changes this man and changes the people around him, it changed the world because people knew God had come. All the promises of God had been fulfilled. This is God here with us. He is here to bring peace. He is here to save us. He is here to keep us from hell. He is here to establish a relationship that he walks with us again. He is here for all of that. This changes the whole world. It's 2,000 years later. It still changes the whole world. When we know the truth. And what does he get for the truth? He's kicked out of the temple. Because they didn't like what the truth did. They couldn't handle the real truth. So then one of the real blessings, I think, that when you read this story is the man gets a second encounter with Jesus. He gets to meet the one who 
who saved him from his blindness when he can see him. And we go to Jan 9, 35 through 41. When Jesus heard what had happened, he went out and found the man. Then Jesus asked, do you have faith in the Son of Man? He replied, sir, if you tell me who he is, I will put my faith in him. What a sweet question. He didn't see him the first time. He's kind of hoping he recognizes the voice and stuff. If you tell me who I am, I will put my faith in him. You've already seen him, Jesus answered. And right now he is talking with you. The man said, Lord, I put my faith in you. Then he worshiped Jesus. Jesus told him, I came to judge the people of this world, and I'm here to give sight to the blind and to make blind everyone who can see. When the Pharisees heard Jesus say this, they asked, are we blind? Jesus answered, if you were blind, you would not be guilty. But now that you claim to see, you will keep on being guilty. You see, he makes the blind to see. Now, we see here what he's talking about. There's two kinds of blind. He makes the blind see that are physically blind. But he opens the eyes to the truth. Those who can't see the truth. I, I, I can't remember if it was a song or what it was. There's a great quote that I lo- love. There are none so blind as those who will not see. You remember when I talked earlier and said a lot of our problems in America is we don't listen? We get so ungrounded in something that we can't believe something would be that way, so we don't listen. One of the things I know that Jesus does is he listens to me. Oh, Yeah. Does he listen to you? When you tell him your problems and your heartaches and your things. So what is one of the things that the church does? We have to listen. We can't immediately form our opinions and know that our opinions are true. Because some of our opinions can be very worldly. And they can be very non-Christ-like. And sometimes it really hurts when he shows us something that we didn't know. Oh, yeah? And he will make us to see. And you know, once we see, we understand that Jesus is the new law. It's a very simple law. You believe in Jesus and profess him, or you die. Very simple. Eternal life, death, your choice. That's the new law. Ask for forgiveness, forgiven. Kingdom of heaven, Jesus Christ forever. Ignore him, walk away, death. Jesus is the new law. But can we believe this? Do we have the desire to see? Do we have the desire to know the truth? Do we have the desire to follow him? Do we like some ways we do things a little bit better? Or do we like Jesus' way? Can we truly follow? Can we change? Because like I said, the Sadducees and Pharisees They just didn't like Jesus' way. They didn't like who he was. They didn't like the changes that he brought. And sometimes deep in our heart, it's one of the things that keeps us from a great relationship with Jesus. Because we don't like some of the changes that he calls on for us. We don't like all the ways that he expects us to love. I'll ask that if you want to pray, that you will pray Jesus will open your heart to help you be the loving follower that he has called you to be. Let's pray. God, I just thank you so much for your son, Jesus Christ. I thank you for his love, grace, and mercy, and I thank you that he has healed the blind. And I ask that he continues to heal me from being blind, from the things that I may refuse to see. And Lord, I ask that you will help me to see the truth. And I ask that you will help me to have a biblical worldview, a view that is through Jesus' eyes and not my eyes. And I ask that you help me that our love will change the world. Lord, be with those today who have never asked to be a follower and help them to ask you to put the mud on their eyes and open their eyes to see what you see. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you will take your communion packs and those of you at home what you've gotten from the refrigerator to come out. And I, I want you to think about the 4th of July for just a minute. And when you think about the 4th of July, you think that we are free. 
But you also know that nobody is truly free in any country. We have little things that we'd like to do. I saw a, a really interesting thing on the news last night. When Bart took one of these back ways, we got down around Jeffersonville and we drove by this firework place. And there, there were people parked over a half mile away walking to this firework place that the thing was and the news guy said last night and they interviewed the people and the guy says yeah he says we're just doing great sales are through the roof and the news guy comes back on and goes don't remember don't forget phantom fireworks is open till midnight you can purchase the fireworks there but it is illegal to set them off in the state of ohio so what we're doing is we're encouraging you to lie when you go up to the register where do you plan to set these off uh we're 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 driving to Myrtle Beach later tonight where by the way it's also illegal to set off fireworks when you walk down the beach you watch people set off fireworks everywhere up and down the beach all night <laughs> but you know you can buy fireworks but you can't set them off in the state of Ohio so apparently can you believe all them people parked and walked all that way last night just to let those things sit in their house that's really interesting isn't it people are drilling everything they can to help the economy oh yeah you know, so there's all these little things that are tying up that we're not truly as free as we think we are. But you know what? Jesus said that whoever the Son sets free is free indeed. Free indeed. I think when you truly know Jesus, you feel so free. You're never threatened by things. People, Other people are threatened by things, and you can't sleep, and you get scared. You're not threatened because Jesus is in charge. Because you follow him, he has set you free. And whoever follows him is free indeed. Let's celebrate by taking this. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for your love and set us free. And Lord Jesus, you have set us free indeed. We praise you for this. We thank you for your body. We thank you for your blood. And we thank you for the freedom that we have in you. The freedom to love others, the freedom to feel loved, and the freedom that we know our destiny. That no matter what happens on earth, our destiny is with you. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may partake. I'm going to do one little special thing I didn't even remember to tell Carla about. You know, uh, I myself am guilty sometimes of becoming jaundiced about America. I went through some things that I learned about the government when I was in my 30s. That If you ever come to my office, I'll sit down and tell you about it. But it doesn't. I, I, I used to, in my 20s, when they would play the national anthem at the Olympics and stuff, I would cry and everything. But I tell you what, as I said before, I truly love America. And I'm truly blessed to be here. And I pray for my country, but I pray for the church in the country. I pray for the world church all the time, but I think sometimes we need to pray for the American church, that the church show the love that Jesus showed. And so I'm just going to ask you to pray with me right now. I mean, I'm going to pray out loud, but I don't want you just to listen. I want you to pray from your heart. I want you to ask Jesus to heal our land. And I'd like you to ask him that the beginning of healing our land would come from the church. And that the church wouldn't be out screaming people about color or statues or masks. But the church would be loving. And the church would be praying for people. And the church would be caring for people. And the church would be seeking to do whatever they could do to help their brother, no matter what color. Oh, yeah? Let's pray. God, we come today. We are living in such a wonderful country. I am so thankful to be an American. I am so blessed that for whatever reason you chose to put me here. I know it is full of a land full of temptation and a lot of evil stuff that can take me away from you. But Lord, I, I know I wouldn't want to live anywhere else in the world. We celebrate our freedoms in you that we can gather and worship and not have to worry about police coming in or 
or having our Bible stripped from us. And what a blessing that is. But Lord, help us to remember what those Bibles teach us since we have them. Help us to use them to realize what a blessing it is that we can meet together and pray and that we can study your word together and that we can have your word. Help us to not take that for granted. Please don't let dust accumulate on our Bibles. Help us to read your word, study it, and become closer to you. And help us to learn that sometimes we need to see the truth. Sometimes our opinions aren't right. Sometimes we need to step back and listen. Sometimes we need to research. And sometimes we can learn a lot. And help us to always have that desire to help our brothers and to love our enemies and to be what you've called us to be because it will strengthen this country. And Lord, as we, we pray in the Lord's Prayer, help earth be as it is in heaven. Lord, help your church to try to help the world be as it is in heaven. Thank you for this country. Thank you for blessing us every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Will you please stand and join us as we sing um, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone.
shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine, but God has called me here below. Will I do want to mention that elders have a meeting at 7 here at the church. Um, and let's go ahead and, yeah. Okay, so that's notebooks, pencils for school bags. Oh, any school supplies? Okay, okay, any school supplies. Um, and just bring those to the church. So, um, okay, let's close in prayer. Lord, we thank, thank you so much for what you have done for us. We ask that you will just help us to go out, spread the word to others, and show love to them. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's say share the love. One, two, three. Share the love. Enjoy your week.